Namaste. Today we are going to watch. This is what they don't teach you about colonization. So, like we have seen his videos, and what he talks about is very different point of view that we see in our textbooks and that we learn from normal people. Like it is about like what we knew about. british against slavery so we did not knew anything about it we just thought okay britishers and americans and all were part of this whole slavery kind of thing that was happening at that point of time but then we got to know how britishers were completely against it and they and and also one point i have to highlight that okay you people do not like us calling you britishers they say that british and britishers is the same meaning but yes in india the thing is we have been uh, like taught in our you know even in our textbooks to call you as britishers only because it is like those britishers came in and they invaded the country and this and that happened so yeah but okay if you guys like it then we'll call you british so so what we learned in that video was that how british like they stopped the slave or they tried to stop the slavery as much as possible so that was very informative to know and okay this time i think so he might give us a different perspective about colonization because normally colonization is treated as okay they came on to us and the similarly in india it is treated as like okay india was a golden bird before all the colonization happened and like after all this and all the things were gone and now we are because of that we are so poor so this is what our mindset is so let's see what he has to say about but we can say that it's not like that uh, only con- uh, colonization affect us in a negative way uh, obviously colonization did uh, positive things in india like uh, uh, you guys brought uh, you guys brought uh, modernization as well as westernization in our country and people and most importantly you also made here railways and uh railways you uh, and you also did very good uh, you know things in this agriculture especially in the punjab if we look uh, at the punjab right now so in the history there was not that much cultivation of agriculture in punjab that much but after the british came in india so basically they made a lot of agriculture policy here and after that uh, basically the punjabi people uh, you know especially uh, punjabi peasants uh, Our became so rich, uh, and yeah, if we look uh, into the railway side also, so you guys did a lot of things in India. Uh, so I do believe that colonization also has negative impact in India as well as positive. Uh, so yeah, I'm so much excited to watch this video and to see what uh, this guy thought is about colonization. So yeah, let's watch the video. Hmm, a lot of things have been given and taken. So let's see what he has to say about in this video. Tom. Thomas Sowell is one of the greatest philosophers of our time, yet he isn't even mentioned among the 100 most influential African Americans in Ebony magazine. Would you link wealth creation to uh, the acquisition of skills and the employment of skills in a in a disciplined way and also uh, in a in a frugal way in, in terms of, of of lifestyles? But others would would attribute uh, the generation of poverty, the obverse of wealth. to uh, colonialism imperialism exploitation mm. uh, yes. uh economic exploitation how how do you handle handle those arguments well as of course as always in this seriously you can simply look at evidence uh, in so far as they're purely political arguments they're saying what people want to hear obviously there are people who would much rather hear that than to hear the other because if you think that's the problem then there's not there's not only a, a quicker solution uh, but there's a more m- more emotionally and morally satisfying solution uh, namely you fight against the exploiters and so on if you look at the third world for example those parts of the third world where the uh, imperialist powers have come in have typically been the more advanced parts of it they've been the most post prosperous ones even if they oh. were prosperous before they got there they became the more prosperous parts those parts of the third world that the imperialists have never touched are almost without exception the very poorest places on this earth oh so you don't find any exploit uh, any explanation for poverty and colonialism uh the reverse perhaps oh absolutely that when when the romans for example invaded uh, the british isles they conquered uh, the southern part of uh britain but they never conquered scotland uh and for centuries thereafter perhaps for a thousand years thereafter scotland was far behind england in economic and cultural development because england had the advantage of tying into the whole roman civilization and everything that it had created to some extent percolated down through the british might mean the british were happy with the romans being there 
You know, a thousand years later, Churchill could say, we owe London to Rome, but that's a thousand years later, and Churchill didn't have to go through what those people went through. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that this was good for the people who were there, but in the, but in the longer run, of course, England became what it was because the Romans came, and Scotland re finally developed only after England conquered Scotland, and then the culture and then developed in England then could spread into, into Scotland as well. Well, does this suggest then that in addressing poverty in today's world, there ought to be a latter-day reincarnation of imperialism yeah. or colonialism nice in question. some form? No, uh, because I think politically it's impossible. Uh, that they're, I, I hear from the perverse parts of uh, some independent nations, they say that they, they, they were better off under colonialism and so on. That, is, that isn't in the cause. Uh, the, the, the people who are in the imperialist nations don't want to take on that. But some cost. would say that there is the functional equivalent of that in the operation of the multinational corporation today. Do you see that, uh, the operation of the multinational corporation, as help or hindrance to uh, the generation of wealth in developing countries? Well, in those countries, the multinational corporations uh, very often uh, not only pay more money than the local industry pays, but it brings in skills that don't exist mm. and creates industries that, that, that never were there before. To that extent, I think they, they are a source of the transmission of international uh, human capital. Uh, to that extent, yes. Now, this excerpt did taken from the book Intellectuals and Race by Dr. Thomas Sowell. In addition to the inherent geographic advantages that Western Europe has had over Eastern Europe, for example, more navigable waterways leading to the open seas, mm. with Western European rivers and harbors not being frozen over, as often or as long in winter as rivers and harbors in Eastern Europe, due to the warming effect of the Gulf Stream on Western Europe. Mm. Another major historic advantage growing out of geography is that Western Europe was more readily accessible to invasion by Roman conquerors. Despite the ruthless slaughters in those conquests and the subsequent brutal oppressions by the Roman overlords, among the lasting advantages which the Roman conquests brought to Western Europe were Roman letters, so that Western European languages had written versions centuries before the languages of Eastern Europe did. Ooh. To the enormous advantages of literacy, as such, Western Europeans had the further advantage of a far greater accumulation of written knowledge in their languages, even after the languages of Eastern Europe began to develop written versions, but still had not yet caught up with the centuries-long accumulations of knowledge written in Western European languages. Literacy was not the only thing that moved from West to East in Europe. So did coins, printing presses, castles, crossbows, paved streets, and vaccinations, among other economic and social advances. Oh. But all of this took time, sometimes centuries. Moreover, people from Western Europe, Germans, Jews and others, were often a majority of the population in Eastern European cities in earlier centuries, while Slavs remained a huge majority in the surrounding countrysides. For example, before 1312 the official records of the city of Krakow were kept in German and the transition, at that point, was to Latin. Only decades later did Poles become a majority of the population in Krakow. The towns of medieval East Central Europe were often cultural enclaves of foreigners, again, mostly Germans, but with many Jews as well and, in the Balkans, Greeks and Armenians, joined in later centuries by Turks. Mm. In short, there has been for centuries, not only a disparity between the opportunities and advances in the two halves of Europe, but great disparities within Eastern Europe itself, between the indigenous peoples of the region and the transplanted Western Europeans living in Eastern Europe, the Baltic and the Balkans. Neither genes nor discrimination are necessary to explain this situation, though some intellectuals and politicians have chosen to claim that the differences have been due to race and others have chosen to blame social injustices. Oh. Many other racial and other groups in many other parts of the world have likewise ended up with large disparities in opportunities and achievements, for reasons that range across a wide spectrum and cannot be reduced to genes or injustices. So this video was, I think, so thought-changing because I had the same thought that, okay, uh, like colonialism has some, okay, imperialist powers has some, you know, advantages. But at that point of time also, there are major disadvantages of how they oppress the people and what happens. But yes, now if I see to it, see after this video, I can say that, okay, it has a kind of a balanced form. They give you a lot of advantages and also they oppress the people because the thing is people do not want change. People like live in that kind of system only and when these people come in with their own things modern techniques and things and so people fight back and they have to fight back and this is how the whole fight went went into and of course it does not deny how much 
money was taken away from all the uh, conquered countries but i can say that okay a lot of it was also put back into it and also like there are some point the thing is like if you hear from winston churchill like he had a line where he said like there was a fem- famine in west bengal in the that is of today that is bengal area of today so there was a very big famine and he said that okay i don't care about those people those will actually don't deserve it and he took all the food that was there to supply to them to the you know at the at the time war was happening so to that place so those are that things uh, those kind of things make you hate kind of colonialism but actually there are some things that english and also like india is benefiting a lot from it also because like how english was spread out in india and due to which you see like all the indian people are able to get hired in all the world all the countries and also like they are able to shine throughout so there are a lot of advantages and disadvantages do let us know what you think about it yes we can say that this video was so informative and we also can say that the colonization has some advantages as well as disadvantages and as the as this guy said that it it also brought uh, basically the colonization also brought development in many can- countries and it also you know spread the education and if we talk about india so basically education was important in Indi- uh, india but the status of the women was not that much good in the ancient india but we, when we look that when the british came so basically uh that status of the women also became higher in our society and the and also there was caste system in india after the british when the british came uh they uh they taught us indian that you know caste system should be vanished from india and they uh they uh, taught uh, w- uh we we uh they taught the women that sh- they also have a right to do education after basically after the indi after basically the british came into our india so we can say that the status of the women became so high and it uh, it was when finally the women uh, took out from their houses and they left their purdah system and they started doing education so we can say that colonization has some advantages and as well as disadvantages in in our country but they looted us on the same side they also looted us so basically uh, if they did development in our country so they also took money from our country uh do so yeah i really like this video and we uh, this yeah, and this video was so informative for hmm this these videos are really thought provoking so what do you guys think about it do let us know in the comment section below so do like share and subscribe bye, bye.